This is the second video on electrochemistry and the first topic is electrode potential. So what is electrode potential? So basically, for example, it's represented by E. Now basically if we have a metal rod, let's say it's magnesium and it's dipped into a solution of magnesium ions and the solution is one molar, one molar per dm cube. So what happens is that the magnesium metal oxidizes to magnesium ions and these ions will combine the magnesium ions will combine with the uh, aqueous medium right so what happens is that this gets oxidized so electrons are left on the metal rod and the ions enter the aqueous medium right so sorry two plus so now the solution becomes more positive whereas the rod is negative which is why there is an electrostatic attraction between the rod and the solution and this attraction is called the electrode potential However, we cannot calculate the electrode potential directly. So what we use is, is a standard hydrogen electrode. So what is a standard hydrogen electrode? A standard hydrogen electrode is basically a platinum electrode. In the standard hydrogen electrode, a platinum electrode is used because uh, hydrogen is a gas. So there is, because it's a gas, so there is a glass tube through which hydrogen is passed because it's standard so that means that the standard conditions should be applied that is 1 atm pressure and 298 kelvin temperature so that's hydrogen being pumped in then the uh, electrolyte is hydrogen ions and again because it's standard condition so that's one molar one mole per dm cube the platinum electrode is used because it's an inert electrode and does not react with the electrolyte and it's covered with platinum black which is an electrolyte which is a uh, sorry catalyst now the value, the equation for this is hydrogen 2H plus plus 2 electrons and the value of E is 0, 0.00 volts for the standard hydrogen electrode. This is why the standard hydrogen electrode is used as a reference electrode for all uh, calculations. So next we'll come to the term or the concept of the standard electrode potential and how it's calculated. Next is the standard electrode potential. It is represented by E0 or E phi. The phi represents standard conditions that is 1 atm pressure to 98 kelvin and 1 mole per dm cube in solution. It is also called SCP as a short form and it's also called reduction potential. So how do we calculate the value of SCP? To calculate the value of SCP now as we know that every element except for hydrogen has a certain value of e for hydrogen the value was 0.00 volts but for all other elements it would be a, a specific value now if we connect that element let's say if it's magnesium with the hydrogen electrode then because hydrogen's value is zero so the voltmeter's reading would give the scp value of magnesium Right? because the difference would obviously be the value of magnesium as hydrogen is obviously al always zero right so to calculate SCP values we'll do some uh, examples of that to calculate SCP value SHE which is the standard hydrogen electrode is used to calculate SCP So if you want the definition of SCP, that is EMF of a cell made up of a test electrode, in, in the example that I gave the test electrode is magnesium and a standard hydrogen electrode under standard conditions. So now what does the SCP value mean? So I told you guys earlier that it's also called reduction potential. So what does that mean? 
So basically, SCP values give the info about the ease of reduction. So, for example, if you if you look at these examples, then over here you can see that all of these equations are the forward reactions are reduction reactions because there is a gain of electrons happening, right? So, if the SCP value is more positive, that means that it is easier for silver ions to get reduced, right? So, if it's easier for silver ions to get reduced, that means that silver ions are stronger oxidizing agents because oxidizing agents get reduced. Whereas for magnesium 2 plus, since the SCP value is uh, highly negative, so it will be difficult to get reduced. It's a, it's a weak oxidizing agent. So, in this direction, the uh, reducing power decreases the ions become ions become weaker oxidizing agents sorry right Where, now let's look at the backward reaction so the backward reaction is an oxidation reaction as there's a loss of electrons for that reaction if the SCP value is more negative then this reaction is more favorable so magnesium is a strong is magnesium gets oxidized easily it's a strong reducing agent right so that's why magnesium is more reactive whereas silver has a high scp value it's difficult for silver to form ions to get oxidized it's a weak reducing agent so in the upward direction metals become weaker reducing agents I hope this makes sense so basically reviewing this quickly if the SCP value is more positive then the substance gets reduced easily it's a strong oxidizing agent if the SCP value is more negative the substance is difficult to reduce and it's a weak oxidizing agent right whereas if we look at the backward reaction then if the SCP value is more positive then the metal is difficult to oxidize it's a weak reducing agent whereas magnesium is a is easy to easier to oxidize so it's a strong reducing agent. One more thing to add on all of these equations are called half cell equations So these are the equations of any one electrode, the, the uh, reaction happening at any one electrode. So to, to make one whole cell, we add two of these equations together and we'll see how we do that. So now about combining half cells. So when we're combining two half cells, so for simplicity, we'll do the following things. These are all comparative statements. So the cell that has a more positive SCP value or a less negative SCP value, that means a higher SCP value than the other half cell. That will obviously be a that will obviously be the half cell where redu reduction is happening. So for simplicity, what we'll do is that we'll always keep that on the right and we'll call it E not right. Whereas the other half cell that is that has a less positive or more negative SCP value where oxidation will be occurring, we'll keep that on the left and we'll call that E naught left. Okay. So over here oxidation is occurring in E naught left. So there is a loss of electrons. Whereas at E naught right there is a gain of electrons. So obviously electrons will flow from E naught left to E naught right. That's the statement I've written over here. Electrons go from E naught left to E naught right. So, and we know that electrons are always flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So, we can call E0 left as the negative half cell and E0 right as the positive half cell. Right? Therefore, the terminal of the voltmeter that is connected to E0 left or the negative half cell is the negative terminal, and the terminal of the voltmeter that is connected to the positive half cell or E0 right is the positive terminal now, next is the standard cell potential it is represented by e naught cell 
it's also called the EMF. The definition for this is the potential difference between the two half cells measured under standard conditions. So how do we calculate the standard cell potential? Now, for example, we have a cell that is made up of, let's say, there is silver and copper. So I'll first write the equations. For silver, the equation is silver ions plus electron using silver. And the SCP value is plus 0 0.80 volts. For copper, it's copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons producing copper. And the SCP value is plus 0 0.34 volts. <laughs> right. Now, since the value of the sil of silver's equation is more positive so reduction will be happening over here so we'll have the same equation that is showing reduction whereas in copper because the scp value is less positive so over here oxidation will be occurring so basically the silver electrode will be pulling electrons from the copper electrode because at silver electrons are being added the silver ions are being reduced Whereas at the copper electrode, copper is being oxidized, so we can we'll flip the equation of copper to show oxidation. Then to balance it, we'll multiply this with two and so on, cancelling the electrons and all. But what I am trying to get to is how do we calculate E naught cell? So what we do for E naught cell is so over here basically this was E naught right because it's more positive and this was e naught left less positive therefore for e naught cell what we do is that we subtract e naught left from e naught right so it's e naught right minus e naught left so in this case the we'll use the formula as 0 0.8 minus 0 0.34 so this is equal to 0 0.46 right I'll also make the overall equation so that would be copper plus 2 silver ions producing copper 2 plus plus 2 silver so over here you can see that silver silver ions are accepting electrons they're getting reduced so they're the oxidizing agent whereas copper are losing electrons so they're the ox they're the reducing agent as they're getting oxidized themselves right now one more conclusion that we'll draw is that if so if e naught cell value is positive the reaction is feasible that's one conclusion second is if e naught cell value is greater than or equal to plus 0 0.3 volts reaction goes to completion I hope it's clear to you next is how do we set up apparatus for an electrolysis experiment so uh, let's say if there is a metal then the electrode for the metal is the metal rod dipped in an aqueous solution of its ions for example let's say it's magnesium so the solution will be uh, magnesium 2 plus and this should be one molar because we're using standard electrode potential value so it has to be one mole per dm cube this is for a metal now let's say there are only ions for example it's uh, let's say iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus over here we can't use the iron metal so what we do is that we use a platinum electrode 
because it's unreactive it does not react with the electrolyte whereas the electrolyte will be Fe2 plus 1 molar and Fe3 plus 1 molar third is when there is a gas that is a, an example we did was the standard hydrogen electrolyte in that case a glass tube is used and there is a platinum electrode again now let's let's take an example of chlorine gas so if it's chlorine then the electrolyte will be chloride ions again one molar and this is platinum let's say that there were the cell had two half cells of metals then how do we connect that so there is the first one metal rod dipped in the electrolyte there is another metal rod dipped in the electrolyte then we have a connecting wires there is a voltmeter connected to connecting the two cells right this is the voltmeter now one more new thing that comes is this salt bridge it's basically a filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate or potassium chloride solution what is the function of the salt bridge it completes the circuit and it maintains electrical neutrality in both the cells so this is the basic structure of a cell and the main things that we need to draw so now we'll take the example of how we calculate the scp values so now we have a zinc and hydrogen electrode and we're calculating the scp value of zinc because obviously hydrogen's scp value is 0, 0.00 volts so so i'll first write the equation for hydrogen so it's 2h plus plus 2 electrons converts to hydrogen the scp value is 0, 0.00 volts and for zinc it's zn2 plus plus two electrons converting to zinc scp value is negative 0.76 volts and the scp values do not have to be learned they they were given in this in the data booklet in the previous syllabus and in the new syllabus they'll be given with the question so in the previous syllabus the data booklet had all of these values given but now in the question whatever values are needed will be given so you don't need to learn them now over here we can see that hydrogen has a more positive or less negative scp value so this will be e naught right and this will be e naught left left obviously so for zinc we'll be drawing the zinc metal in the electrolyte whereas for hydrogen it will be a gas glass tube sorry with the platinum electrode right and these two will be connected through a voltmeter hydrogen gas comes in from here at 180 m to 88 kelvin this is h plus ions one molar this is platinum this is zinc metal and this is zn2 plus one molar this is e naught left this is the negative half cell it's e naught left right this is the negative half cell this is the positive half cell we know that also i forgot the salt bridge this is the salt bridge
we know that electrons flow from the negative half cell to the positive half cell this is the negative terminal positive terminal so electrons will flow in this direction it that's clear now how do we find the uh, overall equation I'll write you not left over here so for the overall equation the equation which is more which has a more positive SCP value or less negative SCP value is written in this same form so the hydrogen equation will be written as it is and zinc has a more negative SCP value so it will be flipped so electrons get cancelled we get Zn plus 2 hydrogen ions reducing Zn2 plus plus hydrogen gas right so now for the E0 cell what we would have done was that we would have subtracted that we, we would subtracted E0 left from E0 right so it would have been 0 0.00 minus minus 0 0.76 right so that's why the voltmeter reading would be 0 0.76 so when we do this experiment because we know that hydrogen has SCP value as 0.00 volts so the voltmeter reading will always give the SCP value of zinc right and because zinc is being oxidized over here the electrode is disappearing so that means that it will be a negative value and zinc is a strong reaction. next what will be the observations for this reaction so in this reaction okay one more thing first E0 cell value is coming as 0 0.7 plus 0 0.76 that means the reaction is feasible and it's greater than plus 0 0.3 so it goes to completion as we did on a previous page uh, yeah so now the observations the observations will be that the zinc electrode the mass of the zinc electrode decreases as zinc ions are being formed and over here bubbles of hydrogen gas will be evolved as hydrogen gas is reduced is the conventional representation of a cell so in this first we write the oxidation form then the salt bridge and then the reduction form including the state symbols so for it, uh, the oxidation form let's take the example of the, the example that we did just now so over here zinc is getting oxidized right so zinc is getting oxidized to zinc 2 plus so we'll first write zinc it was in solid form it's being oxidized to Zn2 plus aqueous. Whenever there is a change in state, then we make a vertical line which is called the electrode interface. This is the total oxidation form. After this comes the salt bridge. The salt bridge is two vertical dotted lines. <laughs> After that is the reduction form. So in reduction, what's happening is that hydrogen ions that are aqueous are converting to hydrogen, right? So hydrogen ions, aqueous, are converting to hydrogen gas. There is a change in state. So we'll draw the electrode interface. And also, if the electrode is different, then the electrode is also mentioned. So over here, platinum is used as solid. So after that, we'll mention platinum, which is solid. And again, there's a change in state, so there's an electrode interface, right? This is the conventional cell representation. Change in state is electrode interface. And this didn't happen in this example, but if there is if there isn't a change in state like aqueous stays aqueous so no change in state then it would be a comma the next example is chlorine and iron to sulfate so i'll first find the equation of chlorine from the data booklet so chlorine is over here chlorine plus two electrons two chloride ions plus 1.36 so it's chlorine plus two electrons, 
2 chloride ions E naught is equals to plus 1.36 volts. Now in iron 2 sulfide there is no mention of an iron metal. So unless and until the metal is mentioned in the, in the question, we will use the ionic equation for, tra for transition elements. So what we will do in this case is that we will look, let us see the equations of iron given. So there are three equations of iron given. Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons giving, sorry, Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons giving, Fe, Fe3 plus plus 3 electrons giving, Fe, Fe3 plus plus electron giving Fe2 plus. Because there is no mention of the iron metal, so we will be using the third equation that is Fe3 plus plus electrons giving Fe2 plus plus 0 0.77. Fe3 plus plus electron, sorry, this is a reversible arrow. Fe2 plus E naught is equals to plus 0 0.77 volts. Now let's draw the diagram. So this will be E naught right, this will be E naught left. So first on the left side we'll have because there are only ions, no metal, so we'll use a platinum electrode. In the electrolyte, electrolyte will be Fe2 plus 1 molar and Fe3 plus also 1 molar. For the for E not right, it's chlorine, so that's a gas, so we'll use a glass tube. There is a platinum electrode inside the tube in the electrolyte. This is platinum. This is chloride ions. One molar. Here chlorine gas is entering at 1 atm pressure and 298 Kelvin. Then we connect these through a voltmeter. Uh, yeah, this is the negative half cell because it's E naught left. This is positive half cell. This will be the salt bridge. Electrons will flow from the negative half cell to the positive half cell. This is the direction of electron flow. This is the basic diagram. Now, chlorine has a more positive SCP value, so we'll write the equation as it is. For iron, it's a less positive SCP value, so we'll flip the equation. Multiply this by 2, just to get cancelled. We get chlorine plus 2 iron 2 plus ions producing 2 chloride ions plus 2 iron and 3 plus ions. This is the equation. For E naught cell, it will be E naught right minus E naught left. E naught right is 1.36 minus 0 0.77. So 1.36 minus 0 0.77. Uh, this is coming equal to plus 0 0.59 volts. This is a positive value, so reaction will is feasible and it's greater than 0 0.3, so reaction goes to completion. We'll also do the cell convention for it. So for the cell convention, we first write the oxidation form. Oxidation is occurring in the iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus electrode. So over here, first we'll write, because platinum electrode is being used, so we first write platinum. Then after that, iron 2 plus is being oxidized to iron 3 plus. There is iron 2 plus aqueous converting to iron 3 plus aqueous. Now over here there is a state change, so there is an electron interface. Over here there is no state change, so it is a comma. After this we have the salt bridge. <laughs> then for reduction, chlo chlorine is being reduced to chloride, so chlorine gas, then chloride, aqueous, 
sorry this is two this is two and then there is again platinum electrode being used so platinum solid state change electrode interface state change electrode interface this is the conventional cell representation is the reaction between iron 2 sulfate and potassium manganate so again over here how do we decide the equations for the electrolysis so from the cat cat ions so we'll do this in the next video probably there there was a reactivity series done in o levels we'll repeat that so in that reactivity series iron comes after potassium and in the reactivity series the metal that comes that is lower down discharges first in electrolysis so that's why iron discharges and because again iron metal is not mentioned over here so we'll use the iron ions the iron equation of iron that is fe3 plus the one we used in the previous example plus electron converting to fe2 plus the e naught value is 0 0.77 volts right now from the anions sulfates again from o level knowledge sulfates never discharge so manganate ions will discharge so let's look for the equation for manganate ions so manganate ions are mno for negative so the equation is these two right again over here there is no mention of this solid so that's why we'll be using the ion equation that is mno for negative plus 8 hydrogen ions plus 5 electrons producing mn2 plus plus 4 water molecules right so mno for negative plus 8 hydrogen ions plus 5 electrons producing mn2 plus plus 4 h2o e naught is equals to plus 1.52 volts now let's draw the diagram so uh, first this is e naught right because it's more positive this is e naught left less positive for e naught left it's iron ions so platinum electrode again in the beaker and over here again it will be platinum electrode because it's only ions right these are connected through the voltmeter and this is the electrolyte this is the salt bridge I'm not labeling all of them the this is platinum platinum the electrolyte will be fe2 plus one molar fe3 plus one molar over here it will be mno4 negative one molar be hydrogen ions one molar and it will be mn2 plus ions one molar right this is you know this is negative half cell this is positive half cell electrons flow in this direction this is the negative terminal positive terminal okay now we know that to find the overall equation we write e naught writes equation in the same in the same form so mno4 negative plus 8 hydrogen ions plus 5 electrons converting to mn2 plus plus 4 water whereas we'll flip the iron equation so fe2 plus converts to fe3 plus plus electron multiply this by 5 electrons get cancelled and we get the equation MnO4 negative plus 8 hydrogen ions plus 5 iron 2 plus ions converting to Mn2 plus plus 4 water molecules plus 5 iron 3 plus ions. This is the overall equation for E naught cell value. 
will have e naught right minus e naught left 1.52 minus 0 0.77 this is equal to plus 0 0.75 volts so it's positive so reaction is feasible it's greater than 0 0.3 so reaction goes to completion lastly we'll do the conventional representation so first the oxidation form iron is being oxidized so and it's a platinum electrode being used so it's platinum solid then the electron interface iron 2 plus ions aqueous there are 5 comma 5 fe3 plus aqueous then the salt bridge as the oxidation is complete after the salt bridge there is a uh, manganate ions being uh, magnet ions then hydrogen ions and then mn2 plus ions so it's magnet ions aqueous then there's eight hydrogen ions again aqueous and then there's mn2 plus ions aqueous after that there is the platinum electrode again so there's the electrode interface this will be the this will be the cell representation the conventional cell representation